questions? We had a couple of questions. Yes? I just want to know. I guess like uh, the pity that he's talking about can they also be un could also be understood as empathy, right? The pity that he's talking about is, yeah, he's talking about empathy as well. It's, it's essentially, that's how he's defining it. He says, when, when you feel pity for somebody else, you, um, you understand their suffering, and you understand it because you can, you can imagine yourself suffering as they would suffer. So it's, it's a, it's, I guess it's, you could say that it's a, it's a combination of running into something strange, a stranger, but then seeing how that stranger is similar to you, okay? Th through the comparison, I suppose. Okay. I'm sorry. What did Warburton say about the community? Oh, what did Warburton say? So um, Warburton, recall, he was saying that in the beginning you have an elaborate story that was the epilogue, the story of the uh, the trees who choose their king, and that story was a very particular story. That could only that was only used in one situation. But what he indicated was, as you continue to tell that story over and over again, making it more familiar, making it into a habit. That story then turns into a proverb that can be used in all sorts of different situations. And so that's the movement from a. I guess you could say a proper noun to a common noun. You recall when, when uh, Hobbes was talking about different types of names, he said there's proper names and common names, and only the common names are the ones that designate a, kind of a, a universal ca category. And so the, those are the really the, the key words that you need because you're defining a category. And so Warburton is saying that happens through habit and familiarity as you repeat the same story over and over again, it becomes more of a general category rather than just a particular case. But then we still don't understand the Well, he said, yeah, Rousseau is saying that familiarity is, leads you to be trapped within your own limited conceptions and you never learn anything new. And Language depends upon learning something new, essentially. He's saying that you, you need that comparison with something else in order then to come to a conception of the thing itself that you're in, ori originally referring to. So I suppose for Warburton, you start out with a particular conception that's, that has lots of detail and that's only a specific case, and then you try and make it more general. You try and find other situations where you can apply that, that apologue. Rousseau has this different starting point where he says, well, you, you know your own situation, or actually you don't even know your own situation until you can compare it to a different situation. Right, and so that process of comparison is really then what can lead to a creation of general concepts, because the general concept can only develop once you've, you're comparing one concept with its opposite or with, with something that's different, because if you only have one concept, you don't really understand what it could be without the comparison to something else. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah? Oh, okay. So Rousseau depends, we, we talked about this, um, I guess, on Monday, where he indicates that he wants to have a natural explanation for things rather than, well, he doesn't say rather than, but I'm adding rather than a biblical explanation. So if he's, if he's going to depend on the Bible, then what he's saying is, or what he could be, or so what Warburton would be saying is that when you depend on the Bible, you're, you realize that the way things are is not necessarily the way they have to be. They could have been different, which to say that when 
God gave us the Bible, he's giving us what religion is, and it's a very particular thing. We wouldn't be able to somehow deduce religion if we didn't have the Bible, right? We depend upon the Bible to, to tell us what religion is. We couldn't just start with a sort of general conception of what humans are and then be able to sort of deduce the text of the Bible, right? So he, what, what he's saying is that it depends upon revelation, which is to say somebody revealing to us, teaching to us how things are. So that's, that's revelation. Revelation is some, essentially God telling us how things are because things could have been differently if God had decided things differently. Rousseau is saying, I'm going to reject that way of arguing. I don't want to just accept something that something's written down for me and that's, that's what I accept as the truth. I want to reason it out for myself. And what I claim is that I can reason things out for myself if I can get to the sort of natural principles by which things have to have happened. In a sense, he's saying, logically, it must have happened this way. If you, if you look around and see what humans are, then we can deduce how they had to begin, in a sense. Sort of seeing how things are and then sort of deducing from that how things must have developed. So he's saying that whether or not there was God and what, whatever God had, 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 had thought of, this is how humans must have developed, regardless of what God thought about it. And so he's saying that we don't need revelation in order to come up with these ideas. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. Um, so I, you know, I think, you know, to a certain extent, Rousseau is kind of agreeing with Hobbes about the way in which you can, you can arrive at knowledge through, through reason, in a sense. Hobbes was, de he, he, he didn't, you know, Hobbes was depending upon, you recall, geometry and mathematics as the, the kind of, and accounting as the kind of example for how you can do that, how you can arrive at truth without revelation. Right, because he sees mathematics as, and geometry as functioning as a kind of truth that you don't need revelation to arrive at. Just the, the idea of a triangle already gives you these principles for how triangles work. Rousseau is not limiting himself, so he's, he's using that same conception, but he's not limiting himself to mathematics. He's trying to deduce things about what the first humans were like just by thinking about I guess what humans are like now, uh, but also by looking at different cultures in the present, different languages in the present, he's trying to deduce what things could have been before. So it's, it's more, certainly more, well, I was going to say it's more speculative than Hobbes, but Hobbes is actually pretty speculative as well. Uh, it's just that Rousseau is, n is not depending upon the sort of mathematical metaphors for what he's doing. Um, he's depending upon a kind of conception of, of what, what the nature of humans is. Okay? Um, so what is the problem when re people remain isolated with their, within their families, according to Rousseau? Yes? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Your name is? Jacob. Jacob. And your name was? John. John, okay. Okay, good. Exactly. So when people are isolated, they don't have a basis of comparison of new things, and so they actually don't even have a sense of self. They don't understand what, they're, what they themselves are like as opposed to something else. And what is the prerequisite for reflection, according to Rousseau? Yes, your name? Van Veen. Van Veen. Is it um, the comparison of different ideas? Yes. The comparison of different ideas is the prerequisite for reflection. So. Actually, there's two things. You, you, have to, you have to get to know other ideas. You have to get to know other things. And then once you get to know other things, then you can, ha you, then you can compare. Okay.